Hello, my name is Kathy Cassidy. I'm a children's author and um, just like an awful lot of you all around the world, I'm stuck at home isolating in lockdown because of horrible coronavirus. And about a week ago, one of the, uh, the mum of one of my readers who lived in the Philippines, she sent me a, a beautiful photograph of her daughter reading one of my books, kind of curled up and all reading um, a copy of Scarlet, one of my, one of my children's books. And the mum said, there is a bit of a problem. We haven't stocked up on enough Kathy Cassidy books to get us through the quarantine. And I've kind of been worrying and, and you know, thinking about that ever since. And I wondered if I should read a chapter of one of my books, perhaps for my reader in the Philippines, perhaps for readers all around the world, and anybody, of course, in the UK or Ireland or any English speaking place where people might be feeling a little bit bored, a little bit scared, a little bit sad, and maybe um, want to escape into a story. And if you've not come across my books before, they are kind of suitable for readers of nine or ten and upwards. Um, but, you know, have a listen, give it a try. I'm going to read you from a book called Love from Lexi. I know it's backwards in the video, but hey, I'm not very good at this. I'm really paranoid about being videoed, but I'm kind of trying to do my best. So... Yeah, I thought I would read you chapter one and um, I'll post another chapter maybe tomorrow or as soon as I can anyway, as soon as I can kind of try and conquer this horrible video thing. But um, I'm going to give you a little warning. This book, it's sad in bits, it's happy in bits, it's funny in bits, it's about friendship and music and kids um, in a secondary school. And it's about, sometimes it's about what it's like if you don't fit in with the crowd. Um, and it's all from the viewpoint of a girl called Lexi. And Lexi has a very sad past, a very sad thing that's happened in her past. And uh, that's, I'm going to read you kind of, first of all, the frontispiece, like a little forward to the book. And then chapter one. And they are both quite sad but I promise you faithfully that the story um, gets much less sad after that so we're kind of getting the sad bit out of the way as soon as we get on to chapter two things will improve I promise um, yeah so here's the forward to the story the little girl is curled up on a second-hand sofa snuggled in a handmade rainbow striped jumper her dark hair braided with bright cotton threads an upturned library book at her feet. She's alone, hugging a knitted toy dog and watching Frozen. Sometimes she pads into the kitchen to look at the clock on the wall. Sometimes she goes to the window and presses her cheek against the glass, looking up at the clear blue sky and then down to the pavement, ten floors below. She peels back the foil from a half-eaten Easter egg and nibbles it, absently. When the movie finishes, she goes to check the clock once more, then returns to the window. The pavement glitters with broken glass and broken dreams, and when her eyes blur with tears, she wipes them fiercely away with her sleeve. She stays there, watching, waiting, until it gets dark. Okay, so now, chapter one how it all began. Have you ever been lost? I have. In a supermarket when I was a toddler at a fun fair briefly aged four or five, on a day trip to Glasgow when I was seven, in the crowds on Buchanan Street. Each time I was scared, panicked. Each time my mum found me, wiped my tears, hugged me tight, took my hand, and made it all better. I thought that was just the way things were, the way things always would be. If you were lost, your mum would find you and make things better. I took it for granted. 
I didn't realise back then that not everything that gets lost can be found again. I was nine years old when it happened and I wish I could say I'd seen it coming, but I really didn't. I didn't have a clue. For starters, we didn't live a regular kind of life. We moved around a lot. For a while, we lived in a flat in Edinburgh, then a farmhouse in the Scottish borders, a cottage by the sea, and once for a whole summer in a bell tent. We ended up in a high-rise block of flats on a Midlands estate, which was probably the worst place of all. But we were happy. Well, I thought we were. The lift smelled of sick and the pavements were starred with broken glass. But at last we had a proper flat with a TV and everything. There was no garden, but Mum said the sky belonged to us. We were on the 10th floor, so there was plenty of it. We could spread our wings and fly, Lexi, she told me a few months after we moved in. Go anywhere. London, Brighton, the south of France. You pick. We could stay here, I said uncertainly, but Mum said that was boring. She took my hands and danced me around the flat laughing, but after a while I pulled away, pressed my nose against the window pane and watched my breath blur and mist the glass. It was the Easter break and the sky was unexpectedly blue, spread out before me like a promise. I was weary of the moves by then, weary of endless new starts in new schools with new best friends who were never going to be forever friends. I'm not a staying in one place kind of person, Mum said. I think I might be, I told her. She ruffled my hair and told me not to be so silly, but she seemed anxious, doubtful. There's a whole wide world out there to explore, she said, as if trying to convince herself. We'll get out there, the two of us, find new adventures. We'll find ourselves. I frowned. But we're not lost, I said. We are, Lexi, Mum replied, and her eyes went all sad and far away. We are. The next day, Mum had an interview in town. I won't be too long, she told me, a few hours at most. I might pop to the shops on my way back. You can watch a DVD while I'm gone. I slid frozen into the DVD player and snuggled up on the sofa while Mum scribbled a shopping list on the back of an envelope. Bread, milk, chocolate spread it said. I'll be back before the DVD finishes, she said, and I barely looked up, just waved, my eyes still on the screen. Mum went out just after 2pm. And she didn't come back. Okay, I told you it was sad. Okay, um, things will get happy, I promise. Tune in again tomorrow or whenever for the next episode, the next chapter of Love from Lexi, and I'll see you then. But keep smiling, and uh, yeah, this is not going to last forever, I promise. So let's let's just escape into into a story, and it will maybe pass the time quicker. <laughs>